welcome. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his UK counterpart Boris Johnson set the negotiating terms on both sides at Diwali deadline for the conclusion of an India-UK free trade agreement during the bilateral discussions that were held earlier in Delhi. Boris Johnson said PM Modi has been very strong in his reaction to what is happening and has happened in Ukraine and that everyone understands and respects New Delhi's decade-old historic relationship with Moscow. What the Indians want is, is peace. Uh, India has a historic relationship with, uh, with Russia, which everybody understands and respects. Our, our Indian friends, he's intervened several times with, uh, with Vladimir Putin, really to ask him what, you know, what on earth he thinks uh, he's doing. Questions about human rights or, or democratic values, of course we have these conversations, but the advantage of our, uh, of our friendship is we can have them. The UK Prime Minister in India to discuss the free trade agreement, certainly not sidestepping thorny issues. Prime Minister Modi, Narendra, my, my cast dost, and I had an amazing reception, absolutely amazing. I felt a bit like Sachin Tendulkar, uh, and uh, uh, my face was about as ubiquitous uh, everywhere as, as Amitav Bachchan. I have the, the Indian jab uh, in my arms, and, uh, and sometimes it can be hard to tell whether something is British or Indian or, frankly, uh, Brindian. A big welcome for UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson on the second day of his two-day bilateral visit to India. His packed day began with a visit to Rajghat. भारत और यूके के संबंधों को मजबूत करने में प्रधानमंत्री जॉनसन की बहुत महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका रही है इस समय जब भारत अपनी आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव मना रहा है प्रधानमंत्री बोरिस जॉनसन का यहां आना अपने आप में एक ऐतिहासिक पल है पीएम जॉनसन एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी held a bilateral meeting at Hyderabad House. The meeting brought Boris Johnson's big announcement. The UK is creating an India-specific open general export license, reducing bureaucracy and slashing delivery times for defence procurement. Several memorandums of understanding were signed between the two countries, including MOU on Global Innovation Partnership between the two Ministries of External Affairs. Memorandum of Understanding on the Creation of Shevning Adani Scholarship on Artificial Intelligence MOU on Satellite Launch Program between New Space India Limited and OneWeb The Partygate scandal clearly followed the UK Prime Minister to India. Do you think that the issues around rule breaking at number 10 doesn't matter to voters? No, I it don't. Doesn't no, matter no, I apologise for, uh, for, the, for the things. I apologise deeply for the things we've got wrong. But we've got to get on uh, with the priorities of the, of the people. That's what we're doing. Well, there was a lot of bonhomie in the visit by the UK Prime Minister to India. Prime Minister Boris Johnson did raise the issue of human rights violation in India and the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which he later qualified calling it a friendly conversation. With camera person Sushil Rathi, I'm Akshay Dongre, Findy TV. Switching tracks to some more political news is Prashant Kishore joining Congress a done deal. Top Congress sources have told NDTV that PK's induction in party and strategist role is more or less a done deal. Congress committee members feel that PK's solutions are workable. Congress leaders want PK to dissociate from all other parties that he has worked with in the past. Now, the Congress leaders want PK to participate fully in organization. Final contours of role to be decided by Sonia Gandhi in consultation with Rahul Gandhi. Prashant Kishore keen on a national role. Sonia Gandhi will take a final call in a day or two and will meet PK. What we have been told by uh, top uh, Congress sources uh, is that it's more or less a done deal. Uh, the fact that uh, they have been deliberating and looking at it, of course, uh, as we've been reporting, uh, a few uh, cardinal rules that have to be uh, 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 pointed out. Uh, the decision of him joining uh, the party will, of course, uh, be in consultation with the Congress President and Rahul Gandhi. Uh, what exactly will be his role as an election strategist and how they go forward? and who will be reporting to all those uh, uh, modalities will have to be worked out and ironed out, which is, of course, the Congress President has been taking a keen interest 
but I think uh, they are quite clear from Prashant Kishore's point of view. Uh, they don't want him to be associated uh, with any other political party and that uh, when he joins the party, he's completely immersed uh, to help the Congress party. Uh, f of course, there's a big debate within the party uh, as well as within the uh, uh, committee members about his role, about his future, about his ideas, whether they're implementable. And I think the final consensus is that it's a workable model. Uh, how they go about it uh, is a matter of uh, detail uh, in terms of communications and everything else. But uh, uh, definitely uh, at, at, at this given present juncture. Earlier in the day, my colleague Nidhi Razdan spoke to senior Congress leader Digvijay Singh on their plans to induct PK into Congress. So let me get straight to the point. Is Prashant Kishore joining the party? Well, I really don't know because uh, this is something which is uh, with the Congress president. But uh, you are part of a committee that she has constituted to give its suggestions on the matter. Can you share with us what your, what no, your suggestions are? We have given are? our suggestions, but of course uh, you don't expect me to share them with you. So give us some idea though. The idea is that we have submitted the report. Okay, but what do you think of the suggestions that Prashant Kishore has put forward to revamp the party? You very saw his presentation, so how very, do you see those? Very interesting. He is a statistics uh, man and uh, he uh, has a political bent of mind and analysis is quite impressive. So what was it in particular that stood out for you in his analysis? Well, uh, nothing uh, very new and nothing that we did not know. It's only a question of uh, how you present an issue and how the party takes up these issues. One of the things uh, he has suggested in his uh, final presentation to you all was one was to concentrate only on about 370 to 400 seats on your own and then focus on alliances in the rest of the seats. Uh, is that correct and, and how, did, how did you all view that suggestion? Well, that doesn't need a presentation of Mr. Prashant Kishore to, sh to say that. As it is, uh, when we see that uh, in some states uh, we have done we are in a direct uh, fight with BJP and there are some states where we are not in direct fight. We have got alliances also. We had pre-poll alliances in 2014, 2019 also in some states. But of course, uh, this is something which the Congress President has to take a call on. Is it, her, is it her final decision also on whether he should be inducted into the party or is certainly, this something you are collectively doing? Certainly yes, it is the Congress President who decides. But what is the feeling in the party about having someone like him on board, possibly in the party? Is, is there some resistance to that idea? No, there is no resistance. The people are receptive. The only thing is that to what extent and how and what. The BJP National President J.P. Nadda today led a show at Nagrota Bhagwan in Kangra, a politically significant district of Himachal Pradesh where the party aims to achieve mission repeat in the December, December Assembly elections. A demolition drive that took place in a town called Rajgarh, 40 kilometers from Alwar town, has kicked off a huge political row in Rajasthan. Here's a report. ये देखो सराय में जो मंदिर है शिव जी का वो कैसे धरासा है ये देखो ये गया मंदिर को this ancient Shiv temple in Alwar's Rajgarh town believed to be 300 years old recently demolished in an anti encroachment drive to make way for a broader road in the center of town along with this temple 86 shops come residences and another new temple a recent construction were also removed but it's kicked off a huge political row with both political parties trading charges. The Congress government in Rajasthan says the BJP ordered the demolition, as Rajgarh town has a municipal council ruled entirely by the BJP. And it's an autonomous body that calls the shots in town planning issues. This was the only decision. There was no decision in the government. No decision in the government. No decision in the government. No decision in the मोटे तौर पर सरकार की तरफ से तो ये होता है कि जहां पर पूजा स्थल है चाहे वो मंदिर हो चाहे मस्जिद हो उसको हटाने के लिए 10 बार सोचना पड़ता है न तो डायरेक्टर लोकल बॉडी से पूछा गया भारतीय जनता पार्टी का के के कंट्रोल का 
वो राजगढ़ नगर पालिका का बोर्ड है जिसने सर्वसम्मति से ये फैसला किया और फैसला करने के बाद में जो है इस घटना को अंजाम दिया But the BJP says the district administration helped in the demolition drive and the state government cannot wash its hands off so easily from the entire exercise. Dekhiye purana aadesh tha 2013 ke andar Goropath banna tha Goropath ruka uske baad wapas nagar palika ne prastav nisandeh parit kiya par nagar palika ke prastav par unhone atikraman hatane ki baat ki par atikraman ko chinhit karne ka kaam और अतिक्रमण को हटाने का काम ये काम सरकार का था वहां के उपखंड अधिकारी का था जो उन्होंने नहीं किया और भैर में से सारे को तोड़ा गया इसकी न्यायिक जांच हो जाए तो सारी की सारी सारी बात सामने आ जाएगी एंड एज द टेम्पल राव इज सेट टू एस्कलेट द कांग्रेस इज प्लानिंग टू इश्यू नोटिस टू द म्यूनिसिपल काउंसिल एंड द बीजेपी इज सेट टू सेंड अ फैक्ट फाइंडिंग मिशन टू राजगढ़ टाउन ये देखो सराय में जो मंदिर है शिव जी का वो कैसे इन जयपुर हर्षा कुमारी सिंह एन In another dramatic development in the Karnataka hijab ban row, the two, two, two students who had first petitioned the court to allow hijab inside classrooms were today turned away from their examination centre of their final class 12 board exams after they insisted on taking the exams wearing burqas. Take a look. Alia Asadi and Reshim. Two 12th class students who went to court on the hijab ban in Karnataka came to write their second PU exams wearing the hijab. This, despite the Karnataka High Court having ruled out that possibility. As the students refused to take off their hijabs, they were not allowed to enter the examination hall. The principal of Vidyodaya College, which was the designated examination center, blamed it on the girls. Have they allowed you to take the exam or not? Are they not allowing you to take exam? Our uh, vice principal was in charge of the examination. They convinced her, so you can write the examination. No one is going to disturb you. But we are following the government rules. We have to follow the government orders. So therefore, we are requesting you to remove the hijab. Then you write. So the students, uh, they said, no, we are writing the exam only by wearing the hijab. They are very much sure that government is not allowing. They came here to create problem, I think. The hijab rav controversy has already turned educational institutions politically and communally volatile. The two young students have expressed their ambition to become a wildlife photographer and an aircraft engineer. However, caught in the politically charged controversy over the issue of hijab, their dreams of becoming what they want to might get sidetracked. In Udupi, with camera person Govind Murthy, Shrija for NDTV. Now, noting that several incidents of fire in electric vehicles have taken place over the last two months, Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari says an ex expert committee will probe the accidents. He's also talked about heavy fines, among other measures, sending out a very strong message. This video put out by Ola CEO and co-founder Bhavish Agarwal dancing to Hardy Sandhu's Bijli Bijli was ill-timed. It came at a time when safety of electric vehicles has become a huge concern. The government has now ordered an expert panel to suggest quality-centric guidelines. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari tweeted that negligent companies would pay heavy penalty and would be asked to recall defective vehicles. In the latest incident this week, an 80-year-old man died and three of his family members suffered burn injuries when the detachable battery of an electric scooter that was kept on charge inside their home in Nizamabad district of Telangana exploded and triggered flames early hours of Thursday. The family had reportedly been using the EV scooter for more than a year. The police have registered a case of causing death due to negligence against the manufacturer Pure EV. Pure EV has said they would recall 2,000 vehicles of e-trans and e-pluto. Last week, Okinawa Autotech had become the first EV maker to recall over 3,200 units of its Prazi Pro vehicles after fire incidents. In earlier incidents this year, 40 electric vehicles of Nashik-based Jitendra electric vehicles caught fire. A father and daughter died in a fire started from an EV in Tamil Nadu. After fires involving Okinawa Auto, Ola EV and Pure EV, they were called in to explain. Electric vehicle sales have gone up threefold from 1.34 lakh last year to 4.29 lakh this year, buoyed by the government push to green technology and also skyrocketing prices of fuel. But 
Serial fires have raised the issues of safety and regulation in this fast-growing automobile segment. Experts point out that in the rush to roll out electric vehicles, many companies could be opting for low-grade, cheap batteries from countries like China and elsewhere. Whereas, the batteries need to be suited to Indian climatic conditions to ensure safety and quality. Manufacturer Okinawa Autotech in fact says that users need to be educated on the correct usage and charging guidelines. With camera person Nagraju in Hyderabad, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. The Maharashtra is dealing with a power crisis due to shortage in supply of electricity from private companies. Load sharing is being reported from rural areas of Maharashtra with a power shortage. In some places, the load shedding is lasting over six hours at a stretch. Take a look. The impact of power cuts is being felt the most in rural Maharashtra. Prashant, a farmer, has had to buy a generator to save his crop. In Vajapur Tehsil of Aurangabad district, he has to depend on a generator and spend on fuel so that the crop does not suffer. Farmers have to buy diesel worth thousands of rupees for this at a time when prices of fuel are also shooting up. जनरेटर खरीद लिया है एक लाख रुपए का जनरेटर है वो ट्रैक्टर पे चलाते हैं उसको डीजल डालना पड़ता है डीजल भी बहुत महंगा हो गया है कम से कम साढ़े आठ हजार का डीजल लग जाता है दिन भर में हम पूरी कोशिश करेंगे कि महाराष्ट्र में आपका सर झुकने नहीं देंगे महाविकास आगाड़ी का सर झुकने नहीं देंगे और पूरी तरीके से लोड शेडिंग को रोक के रखेंगे आज रात से लोड शेडिंग कम होना शुरू हो जाएगी अभी हमने कम की है और धीरे धीरे वो कम होना शुरू हो जाएगी और आने वाले दिनों में लोड शेडिंग ना हो उसके लिए हमारी तमाम कोशिश लगी है महाराष्ट्र एनर्जी मिनिस्टर नितिन राउत क्लेम्ड देर इज नो लोड शेडिंग इन द स्टेट ऑन ट्यूसडे नाउ ही एडमिट्स देर इज लोड शेडिंग बट सेज इट विल एंड सोन राउत मेट चीफ मिनिस्टर उद्धव ठाकरे थ्राइज दिस वीक टू डिस्कस द क्राइसिस द शॉर्टेज इज ड्यू टू नॉन डिलीवरी ऑफ फिक्स इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बाई प्राइवेट कंपनीज 1405 megawatt is the amount of power supply reduced by Adani Power. 100 megawatt of power was to come from JSW Power Plant, but that did not happen. Tata Power is falling short by 130 megawatt due to supply issues. Notices have been sent to these companies due to erratic power supply. Maharashtra is facing a shortage of about 1400 to 1500 megawatt of electricity every day. With businesses reopening after COVID, people returning to work and increasing temperatures has increased electricity consumption. The state's energy minister says the center is partly responsible. Puja Mantra Le ne jo pichle apte meeting li thi usme sare discom ke logo ko keh diya tha sare pradeshon ke adhikariyon ko ki aap 10% imported coal purchase kijiye. और उससे आपका कोयले का जो संकट है उसको दूर कीजिए और कोयला मंत्रालय ने रेल मंत्रालय को भी हड़काया था उनको कहा कि आप रैक हमको नहीं दे रहे उसके वजह से बिजली का संकट आ रहा है तो ये बात तो कहीं तो भी गड़बड़ नजर आती है और ऐसा लगता है कि कहीं तो भी दाल में काला है दिन बीजेपी इज ब्लेमिंग द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट फॉर द पावर क्राइसिस एंड लोड शेडिंग While the state government blames the private company's policies as well as the central government for the current crisis, the reality is that the energy minister of Maharashtra said that there will be no load shedding and three days later load shedding started in the state and it has affected the rural population the most. In Mumbai with camera person Ashok Madik, Sohit Mishra, NDTV.